welcome yogis. I'm Avani of the Kribe Yoga Academy and I'm here with Alex, a graduate of the Kribe Yoga Academy, who's going to demonstrate for us uh, Surya Namaskar B. So we're going to do a breakdown of each of the postures in Sun Salutation B. And then in the end, I'm going to walk Alex through the entire sequence so that you'll have that as a cueing and voice guide, in particular for those that are teaching the practice of yoga. So certainly students as well, this may be useful for um, main physical landmarks in each of the postures. So let's get started. Surya B. She'll begin by bringing her palms together at heart center, samastitihi, and find a lift of the sternum up in toward the thumbs. So a lot of length in the trunk, strength in the belly, draw the navel back toward the lumbar. Always a great spot to recenter. And then bring your gaze down. You can touch your toes together, big toes together. Spread the rest of the toes out wide. So from samastitihi, a little bit of a gap between the heels. Sink your sits bones down and back, right to utkatasana or fierce bow. So there's going to be a little bit of a swing in or a rock in of the tailbone. And then you can sink the sits bones down as far as feels comfortable for, for quadriceps, for hamstrings. Not necessarily required that you have to see the tips of the toes. However, if there's any sort of strain in the knees, or if your heels start to peel up off the earth, you definitely want to draw those sit bones a little bit further back. And then it's option to have the hands uh, about shoulders width distance apart, where the Ashtanga variation would be with palms together. Yeah, And then on the exhale, raise your hips and fold it all the way forward. Utkanasana. So we've seen this one before, Surya Namaskar B has most of the same poses as Surya Namaskar A. So if you've got that one down, this is a really gentle jumping off point from that. So forward fold again. The fronts of the legs, quadriceps, are going to be really active and engaged. You can have a gentle bend in your knees if there's any um, in undesirable intensity in the hamstrings, right? And then release the neck spine, soften the shoulders, let the front of your head drop down toward the earth. Next posture, Ardha Uttanasana, a half fold. So you can slide up to your fingertips or bring your hands onto your shins. I like to invite the gaze to stay down toward the earth so that the neck spine stays more neutral. So we're not creating a compression by craning the gaze upward. And then an activation in the belly. So rather than kind of softly hanging out halfway up, right, there's a lot of length here. Crown of your head is extending over the top edge of your mat and then the navel is lifting back with the spine. Also, you could um, encourage Mula Bandha or lift of the pelvic floor. And then land your palms down, take a big step back. Next pose, plank pose, Palakasana. Shoulders slide up above elbows and wrists. All that same engagement in the front side of the body. You can give a little gentle press back with the heels toward the back edge of the mat. Yep, plank pose. And then this will all be on one exhale as we begin to move through this more fluidly. A bend into the, uh, oh, sorry, first a slight roll forward, just a slight roll forward, and then a bend of the elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana. Draw down only until shoulders and elbows come toward a shelf-like line, and she's doing a beautiful demonstration of this, so that the fronts of the shoulders don't go lower than the elbows, Chaturanga Dandasana. And then lengthen the arms, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, an upward facing dog. You can see she flipped onto the tops of her feet, allowed her hip crest to drop heavy. And here the activation is the whole back line of the body. So low back is strong, glutes are strong, hamstrings are strong, and the front side of the body is getting a nice, um, luxurious length there. Okay. Lift of the crown of the head upward to the sky. And then roll up and back over your toes. Her hips come high and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now, if you're in a vinyasa practice, often here, the instructor might invite you to lift one leg or the other. I know my um, Ashtanga friends out there are tisk, tisk, tisking me on that one. 
Um, we're going to skip that part, but you certainly have that option to add that in. So one of the principal differences between Surya A and Surya B is, of course, that Utkatasana, right, the fierce pose, and then there's an addition of a warrior pose, Virabhadrasana, one on either side. So Alex is going to lift her gaze forward and step up and through with her right foot. And then she'll spin her back foot down. Now, again, there's different lineage and philosophical beliefs in the alignment for this. My request is that she's going to take a look back and leave a little bit of space between her heels so that the, the points of her hips can actually kind of be the width that they are as she rises up. So she's pressing into the outer blade of her back foot and then she rises. There's a little bit of an activation to draw her right hip back and then to actively draw her left hip forward. Now, pay attention, yogis, if there's anything sharper shooting in the back knee, that's where you want to experiment with the width of your foundation. So if you're a little bit wider, and as you rock that back hip forward, the knee feels a little twisted, maybe you take it a little bit more narrow or even more wide, right? So arms can be shoulders with distance apart, with nice active fingers. Look for length in the next spine. Palms might also join one another overhead. Virabhadrasana, one. And then on the exhale, bring your hands right down through your heart, come down to frame your front foot. This is fun about Surya B too as well. We get to do Chaturanga three different times. So she's gonna step back with her right foot. We've already broken down these poses, so I'm gonna let her move through a little more fluidly. Little slide forward, she bends her elbows toward her ribs and then lengthens right to her back bend. Remember, you can always give your students options here to take baby cobra or spank something lower as well. And then she'll roll up and back over her toes, downward facing dog. All right, lift your gaze forward. Let's set that foundation on the opposite side. Step your left foot all the way up and through. Spin your back heel down. So Alex knows best what works best for her body. So she's gonna press through the outer blade and take the heels wide or a little closer together and then rise. Work to roll your ribs back so they're above the pelvis. There's a little bit of a tendency here and actually I'm gonna ask Alex to show, to do what's called like the rib flare. So I'm gonna have her take a little, like this little back bend that happens naturally here. She's exaggerating it. I promise your warrior ones don't look like this. This is a little bit of a natural tendency to have the ribs flare out. So this is why it's a great cue to invite your students to draw their ribs right above their pelvic bowl. And so then they're turning on their, their ugly and their abdominal fire as well. So same options, arms can be shoulders width apart or palms touching. Look out for any sharpness in the back knee, adjust your foundation accordingly, and then the front knee stacks right above the ankle. And breathe on down, breathe your hands through your heart, frame your front foot, and step back. So this is Chaturanga number three in one sequence, Surya B. There she goes. And we already finished our morning practice today, so she, <laughs> she's really pulling out all the fire. Okay, back to downward facing dog. And then to wrap up this sequence, She'll lift her gaze forward and journey to the top edge of the mat. So that would be a walk, one step, or a hop. Right as you arrive, lift up halfway. So just like Surya A, it's a uh, Adho Uttanasana. Exhale, back down, deepen your fold. Strong and active in the quadriceps. And then rather than lifting right back up to tall standing, as you lift the center, remember to touch the big toes together at the midline and drop back towards your seat. So you bookend the sequence with that really deep, uh, fiery for the upper legs, for the thighs, for the quadriceps, for the hamstrings pose, Utkatasana or fierce pose. And then exhale, draw your palms together, lengthen your legs and lift Samasthi. Okay. So, the second round, I'm going to walk Alex through it, and I told her this before we started, we're going to move through it at uh, Ashtanga style pace, which means really one breath, one movement. You can certainly in your own practice 
slow it down a breath or two. You could take each pose for two breaths, for three breaths, for five breaths. Um, you can cut out or modify the chaturangas by landing your knees or taking a lower back bend as well. So, go ahead and draw your hands together at your heart. Lift your sternum towards your thumbs. Press your palms actively in toward one another. And then with your inhale, touch your big toes together. Sink down towards seat. Utkapasana. A little roll of your pelvis in. Your belly gets fiery. Exhale, lift your hips, draw your hands down to the earth. Utkanasana. With your inhale, lift up just halfway, drop to fingertips and shins. And then exhale all on one breath. Plant your palms, step back, and lower down. Chakaranga Dandasana. Lift your sternum up with your gaze forward for a long neck spine. Activate the whole back line of your body. And then exhale, roll up and over your toes, reach your hips high and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, land your feet hips with distance apart. Rest your head between your upper arms. Bring your gaze forward, step your right foot up between both hands. Spin your back heel down and draw your front knee above your ankle. Rise, arms, shoulders width apart or palms together. Zero, one for a breath. Ribs slide back above your pelvis, nice. Exhale all the way back down, land both hands. Here we go, Chaturanga round two. Step back, slide slightly forward, lift your heart up, lengthen crown of your head to the sky, and then roll over your toes. Reach your hips high and back, take a breath. Inhale your gaze forward to your fingertips, left side. Step your foot through, spin your back heel down, draw your front knee above your ankle. Inhale all the way up, press through the outer blade of your back foot. A little bit of an invitation of the right hip forward, nice. Breathe your hands all the way back down. Frame your foot, chakranga number three of the seated step back, slight slide forward, elbows just to your ribs, and then lift your heart on your inhale. Roll up and over your toes. Breathe back with your hips high. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lift your gaze forward, step, walk, or hop, all the way up. As you arrive, lift halfway to fingertips or shins. Exhale, activate quadriceps to fold deeper, lift your pelvic floor, draw your navel back, touch your big toes together, spread the rest of your toes out wide, and drop your sits bones low. Utkatasana, fierce pose. And then pull your hands together to your heart, come to standing. Samasthiti. Right. Surya Namaskar B breakdown. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave any questions or comments in the comments below. Thank you, Alex, so much. Thank you, yogis. Have a beautiful day. Jai Bhagwan. Namaste.